All right, welcome to video four of creating commands with the Velocity Development API. This is gonna be a little bit of a long one because creating commands is not simple in Velocity. Uh, there are three different methods to create commands in Velocity and each have their own purpose. The first one, which we're gonna be covering today is the Brigadier command. Brigadier is a library developed by Mojang, which is how they actually register commands internally with Minecraft. Velocity uses that library as well. It is quite complex, but also very powerful. The second one is the simple command. Now, simple commands look very similar to uh, spigot and bungee cord and bucket commands. Um, there is one method for the execution, one method to check if the executor has permission, one to suggest tab completion, and another to suggest tab completion asynchronously. Uh, that one, the difference between Brigadier and the simple command is that simple commands, all the arguments are passed just as a string of text. Brigadier commands, each argument is named. And finally, there's the raw command, which does not include any processing for arguments or anything like that. Um, it's used for if you want something like a slash say style command where the argument contains a string um, or you're using an external command framework to process instead. So again, like I said today, we're gonna to be covering Brigadier. There's a lot here. So we're gonna go ahead and go a little slowly and unpack it step by step. The first thing we wanna do is create a new class and we're gonna call this default lobby command. You can name this whatever you want to. And in here, we're going to create a public static Brigadier command, create Brigadier command, final proxy server proxy. The reason why we're passing the proxy server as a parameter is because we need to be able to access it within this command. We're also gonna be returning a Brigadier command from this method. Before we go ahead and get any further, what I want to do in the main file is create a new variable. This is gonna be both a getter and a setter. And it's going to be a private static string called default server. Then within the constructor of our plugin, we're going to do default server dot, I'm sorry, default server equals lobby. And then down here, I wanna go ahead and change this to default server and then default server as well. What this is going to allow us to do is change the default server on the fly and what players or what server players connect to by default. Back in here, we're gonna do something, and this is gonna look a little crazy, so just bear with me here. We're gonna create a literal command node. This literal command node is going to be of type command source. Command source comes from velocity. Uh, if you're wondering, command source contains an audience and a permission subject. Audience comes from the adventure API. It's gonna be a default lobby node, and this is gonna be set equal to a literal argument builder dot and then we're going to do what they call a type witness this is technically a generic method and we need to pass what it's going to return to us into the method we're going to name this command default lobby now we're going to do it dot then now if you're a javascript developer this is not a promise okay this is not something that's going to happen afterwards right this is the next argument, so to speak. And dot then in Brigadier specifies arguments. Dot then required argument builder, because we're gonna go ahead and build this out. This is gonna be of type, command source, and string. We're gonna, make, we're gonna name this argument server. This is not what we're typing in, this is just what we're gonna use to access the argument later. And this argument is going to be of type word, which means that we're only going to use a single single word or a single string for the argument. We're not going to use a string of words, right? We're not going to use like my dog is brown, right? It was just going to be my. The next argument would be dog. This is going to suggest... My bad, I'm sorry, one moment. <laughs> Wrong parenthesis. Dot suggests, and this is going to be a lambda, which passes in the context 
and the builder. And put that there. And now what we want to do to suggest for this method, which is going to be the tab completion, is a collection of our registered servers. So we're going to do proxy.getAllServers, import collection and registered server. That's why we need proxy in our method uh, parameter, because we need to be able to access it here. Remember, it is a private method in here. We could add a setter to that, but we wouldn't be able to access it because this needs construction, and we can't construct it. So we want to do proxy.getAllServers, and then we're going to do something a little different here. So first off, more Lambda functions here. We're going to do for each server in this list. And then server is going to be the variable we're checking. We want to do a try and catch. We're going to catch an illegal argument exception. Now, why are we catching that? Because we're going to try to get the server variable, except, or, sorry, the server argument. But if server hasn't been provided to the command yet, this will throw an illegal argument exception. Basically, if we catch this, we want to go ahead and return every single server possible because they haven't started typing yet. So we want to give them everything they can type in. String argument equals ctx dot get argument. Remember, ctx is the context. It's just abbreviated here. Server and string dot class. This is how we're going to access the argument within Brigadier. We need to pass the argument and the type of it. Now we're going to do if server.getServerInfo.getName.starts with our argument that we passed in. We want to suggest it to the player. Server.getInfo.getName. And now if we want to, we can also pass a tooltip. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to do velocity brigadier message dot tooltip. And we're going to use mini message for this. I want to make this rainbow. Let's go ahead and deserialize this. We're going to say rainbow and then plus server.getInfo.getName. Let me go ahead and clean this up a little bit so we can see what we've done so far, because that is a little bit of a mess. And to indent that, indent that. Come down here, indent that as well, and then that. There we go. So what we've done so far is we're going to say servers.foreach. So for every server that the proxy has registered, we're going to check if what we have started typing starts is what starts any of the server names. So if we typed the letter L, we're only going to return servers that start with the letter L. If we typed in the letter F, we're going to only return servers that start with the letter F. If we haven't typed anything, we're going to come down here to this catch statement, which is our legal argument exception. And we're just going to go ahead and suggest every single server. And actually what we can do is we can just copy and paste this because it's the exact same thing. So why are we copying and pasting? Why do we have duplicated code here? Remember, we're only recommending a server name if the string that we've started typing contains that. There could be a better way to do this. I haven't figured that out yet. Now we want to go ahead and return the builder and we're going to do build future. All right, so far so good. We have a lot of errors. Let's just keep going here. We'll clean that up in a second. Dot executes. And this is what's going to actually happen when our command is run. Remember, we've only done tab completion here. Context. If context.getSource. I'm sorry, instance of, remove that dot, player. We want to check if the person sending it, right, if the context of the command or if the source of the context is a player object. If it's the console, we don't want to let them do this. This is where you would do this at. Now, technically speaking, you do also have a dot requires method. Now, what I have found, I'm not sure if this is a bug or not, but what I have found is if you return false in the dot requires, Velocity thinks that it's the command doesn't exist, right? It thinks command doesn't exist. I'm going to tell you that message even if you provide feedback. So I could do dot, dot requires command source 
and then I can do command source dot has permission permission dot node, right? Now this would return false here. So it would say that the command doesn't exist. What if I did this? What if I did a bracket here? And I did if not has that permission, which means if the, if the command source does not have that permission, I can do command source dot send message component dot text. And then I can return zero. What would happen here? So I can also do return command source dot, I'm sorry, not command source. Uh, it would be command dot single success. So we're giving some errors here. Let's just push on. Uh, int cannot be returned to bool. I'm sorry, I forgot requires requires a bool. So, okay, now what are we doing here? Again, we're checking if the player has, or the command source has this permission. Now, if they do, it'll continue as normal. If they don't, it'll say no permissions, but then Velocity will also say the command doesn't exist. It's a weird bug, it's a weird quirk. We're just gonna work around it by doing our checks within the executes block instead of the requires block. I'm gonna do context.get source here. Dot send message, component dot text. You must be a player. And I'm going to return zero here. Executes is where you want to return zero. Requires is where you want to turn Boolean. Now, why am I not doing a string? It's because Velocity uses the uh, command, or sorry, the adventure API, which uses components instead of strings for their messages. Now, if they are a player, we want to go ahead and allow them to set this. So I'm going to do string argument provided equals context dot get argument server string dot class, just like we did earlier. Now, when we get to the executes, that means we know for a fact that an argument has been passed. So we don't have to worry about this throwing in an illegal argument exception, unless, of course, you made a typo here. Now I'm going to do lobby dot get default server dot. I'm sorry set default server because we're going to set it to the parameter we provided argument provided and there we go now we're going to go ahead and just tell, send the player a message that says that it was successful i'm going to go ahead and cast the get source to a player object since we know it is a player at this point player dot send message component dot text set default server to and then argument provided and then finally, we want to return command dot single success. If I could spell command correctly. Now we're still having some errors here, so let's keep on trucking. We want to do uh, executes down here outside of all the parentheses. What is this dot executes? We already did it right here. This is on the main command. That dot executes was within the argument, right? So you can do an odd, a dot execute for every argument you provided, which is why Brigadier is so powerful, but also a little complicated. You could also break this up into different pieces, but I'm just doing it all in one line here. Let's do context. And then I'm gonna go ahead and copy this again. We're just gonna reuse the same code there. Otherwise, return command.single success. This is also where you could do like your help, for example, if you wanna send them help information. But for now, this is just gonna return blank. And finally, after all that, we want to return a new Brigadier command. Set default lobby node. All right, no errors, finally. We do have a few warnings here, but it's not that big of a deal. Um, mainly because the class and the Brigadier command have not been used. We're gonna fix that. Let's go back to your main file. And then within your proxy initialize event, right up here, this is where we will register it. So we want to go ahead and get the command manager for velocity. Get command manager. We also want to create command meta for this command. We didn't provide any of that information earlier, right? We just said what we want to listen to here. This is the command name. This is not actually the command text. And this is the argument. But we never provided information, any information on the command and what it's going to do. Command manager dot meta builder. And this is where we're going to type in our default command. 
Now let's say you want an alias. No problem. Type in dot alias and then deal. We want to provide it a plugin object and we're going to go ahead and build this thing. And now we want to create a new Brigadier command. We want to call that method from here. Because remember, this returns a Brigadier command. We want to pass our proxy in. And finally, we're going to register this thing. Register command meta and set default command. We have finally created our command. It was a lot of work, right? So let's go ahead and break this down. I'm going to go ahead and collapse some of these methods to help explain it. First off, we have our argument builder. This is going to help us actually build the command. We have our dot executes, right? This dot executes here is the main portion of the command, right? Dot then is for arguments, dot executes is just for the root. We're just checking if they're a player. If they're not, we want to tell them you have to be a player to use this command. Otherwise, we're just going to say, yep, command was successful. We're done, even though we don't provide any feedback. Within our dot then, we're naming an argument called server, and we're suggesting the list of servers to the player. This is also what we're handling um, tab completion. Then down here within the dot executes within the dot then, this is where we're executing the command if an argument is provided. And in this case, we're setting the default server within the main uh, class plugin class here to whatever we type. Now, we're not doing any checks here to make sure the player actually typed in a valid server. We're just saying we can set it to whatever, but we are providing them a list of servers. If you wanted to, you can do those checks here. Otherwise, leave it alone. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and build this and install it on my server and I'll be right back. All right, we're back on our server. Now we have the plugin installed and loaded successfully. So let's go ahead and test this out. We're gonna do default lobby and just hit enter. Nothing should happen. Perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and check the console in the background just to make sure. And there were no errors, which is perfect. So let's come back in here now and let's do default lobby space. You see here, we now have a suggestion called lobby. Lobby is the only server that I have registered on my Velocity network. However, if you have more, all of them will show up here. We also did that tool tip. So if you hover over lobby, you'll see the word lobby in rainbow. If we type in the letter L, it'll still keep suggesting that to us. But if we type in another letter, it won't because it doesn't start with that. We can do lobby, hit enter, default server to lobby successful. Now, again, like I said, we can also type in whatever we want here. I can do terabyte is cool. And that's the default server now. So if I were to disconnect and then try to reconnect, we would have some weird issues. You see here, I'm stuck on joining world. That's because terabyte is cool. is not a server that's on my network. So just be careful, do some checks. However, if I were to reboot my proxy real quick, let me go ahead and do that here. Just hit the restart button. It'll only take a second. We're good to go. Hit connect. We should be back to normal because again, we set the default server to lobby in our constructor. There we are. That is it for episode four of the tutorial. Next episode is going to be configuration.